time. It is time to brew your best beer. The 2015 SJ Pour Challenge is brought to you by the Grain Bill Homebrew Supply, located in Red Lion, Pennsylvania. Brewers Exchange, operating in the U.S. and Canada. Finney's Homebrew Emporium, located in Bishopdale, Christchurch, New Zealand. And Omega Yeast, located in Chicago, Illinois. What's up, B's and G's? Um, we're doing another SJ uh, review. This time we are doing... Ooh, I don't want to shake this one. Um, F70264 04A. Um, this is the beer that the last time I started a review I thought was the pop it, let it fizz, enjoy it later beer. Um, this is that one. I fucked up the last time, thought that was it. This is it this time. So, I'm going to pop it, let it fizz, and then I'll come back. So, bear with. I'll be right back. Pause. All right, y'all. I'm back. So, I poured it out. I tried to be as gentle as I could. Um, and it still came up. Um... It's creamy, the head. It's thick, it's coffee colored, it's a beautiful head. A little, obviously, I think a little overcarbed, this one. Um, it's black with some, black with some red um, highlights around. If we're looking at a stout, it's a little overcarbed for a stout um there's a part of this though that makes me question as to whether or not this is fully a stout or if this is a stout by appearance only or or what now mind on the spreadsheet this doesn't have a style designation it just says local malts and oat and it says Pop it, let it fizz, and then enjoy it. Sorry, you guys have to apologize. I have to apologize. I've been crack a lacking all day long. Jesus Christ, and people upstairs are dropping shit all over the place um, in the brew dungeon. Um, I've been busting my hump. Old man Johnson's busting my hump. Um, Old man Leland is busting my hump over these reports. So I've been cracking at it all day, so this is the first beer that I've had today, so... Um, anyway, um, so I don't know if it's 100% stout. It's got that dark fruit, raisin, and, um, prune nose to it. Catching a lot of that. Actually, just, um... A little bit of cherry, too. Um, and then what was really interesting a second ago, I, I never got peach on the peach beer that was in the that was in the East Coast. Oh, Jesus. Hub. I got more cherry out of that, that peach beer. This just hit me with a fucking peach. I don't know why, but it did. Um, pushing a little bit of peach on the nose on this one. Definitely fruit. There's a lot of fruit on this, actually. Um... Yeah, uh, plum, some deep prune, but also a um, apple. I don't know if calypso is in this, maybe, um, but there's there's an apple note, like a um, not a bad off flavor apple, like not green apple, but like a. Um, What's the, uh, like a Mac, like an empire, actually. Um, kind of a, kind of an apple note on this. 
Yeah, actually, as I swirl it, it's, it's even more predominant now. Um, hold on. Yeah, it's got a very, very apple nose. Um, now, actually, even more so than, than the other flavors that I was catching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sip of this, and I'm going to let it sit for a second and warm up a bit and hang out, and then I will come back to you all, and I'll be back in two seconds. What up, folks? All right, I'm back. Um, so I poured out the rest of the bottle. I've been sipping on this for a minute. Um, the apple is definitely there. It's well present, um, not only in the nose, but it's definitely there on the on the tongue. Um, not unpleasant, not that it's an off flavor, I don't think. Um, I, I'm again going to say maybe or possibly it was Calypso that was in this. Um, but again, that's a very thin branch that I'm walking out on. Um, what I am picking up a ton of, um, not I mean a veritable ton of, is uh, blackstrap molasses. So I'm pretty sure this was there was a lot of that in here, either the what is it, Brer Rabbit or maybe Old Grandma or whatever the hell. Um, but there's you had to put um, you have to have had because I oh, and if you did didn't fuck. It's there. I mean, there's a shit ton of molasses in this, which I'm wondering as to um, if that can account for the unbelievable carbonation, amount of carbonation in this. Um, it's really present. Um, it's coating my tongue right now. It's mid palate. I can, I do that and I can just taste it. I mean, I don't know when it, if you did use it when it went in, whether it was early, early boil, sometime late, or can't imagine that you would have used this at bottling, but, you know, then again, I have no idea. Um, fuck it, everybody's methods are different. Um, it's interesting, you know, as I'm drinking this, I'm going to take another sip. interesting as I drink this um, where right behind the camera is a bottle of blackstrap rum that I'm using in a cider I've been aging oak uh, oak wine spirals on um, on blackstrap rum for a cider and this has that apple flavor um, apple aroma and that flavor. So it's interesting because I'm getting sort of a precursor, a sort of preview of what could be. Um, it's it's a good beer. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I think that the one thing I am saying is I think that the molasses is sort of overpowering in this. I mean, this is what I, what it finishes and how it finishes. And that's all I'm kind of left with is very treacly, molasses -y flavor um, with an apple nose. Very... I can't get... I can't get the, the dark fruit that I had originally gotten when I first poured this. It's now... I think I've said it to myself and now I can't get past it. I can't get past what I've told myself. There's some heat in there too, actually. Um, I just took a really deep, deep sniff of that, and really down deep. There's definitely some alcohol heat in there. Not bad when I taste when I taste it when I drink it. It's not a a burn, um, but it definitely screams at me that this is probably like a seven percent, seven and a half maybe. There's enough alcohol in there. Um, that, yeah, this thing, um, this thing got boozy. I think this thing got boozy on you really quick. Sorry, I'm going to take another sip while we're talking. 
the mouthfeel is kind of thinnish. Um, for a beer this big or this um, bold, sort of appearance-wise, this, this bold, it finishes really thin. Um, which makes me feel that this might not be a stout. I don't know what it could be if it's not, because it's not, it could be portery too, but it's not, it doesn't feel like it's typical porter. Um, and it's not hoppy enough for it to be anything sort of on the, the, the BIPA range. So I don't think it's that. I think it's, I think it's a stout. Um, again, I don't know. It's not listed on the sheet. So I apologize. Um, don't want to offend by not calling your your beer what it is. Um, it's a good beer. Definitely, a, it's a quaffable, drinkable. As you can tell, I drink a lot of big beers, big dude, big beers. Um, so it's crushable in multiple multiple of them as I could do. So it's definitely drinkable, good beer. Um, I think that whatever, if you did use molasses, depending on when you put it in, either tone it down or move it, move it away um, from where you push it back to where you used it because it's really dominant and really prominent in the flavor. Um, and then the apple, I hesitate to say that the the apple is there as an off flavor. I don't know if it's actually intended to be so. Um, yeah, I don't. Sorry, kids. I'm not saying that the over carb and apple flavor is sign of infection. Not. In, I don't feel like in this that that's that's the case. I don't think that this is infected or um, a bad batch. So I had, that's why I question as to whether or not certain uh, calypso was calypso was used um, in this. But anywho, it was a good beer. Um, thanks for the intro. Intro in the what's the fucking word, Dan? Jesus Christ! I don't know. Thanks for putting this beer in. My brain is absolutely fucked. Anyway, good luck. Uh, in the rest of the competition, cheers, good on you, and uh, later, guys. Bye. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs>